The morning commute wasn't really much of a commute for some, thanks to scenes like this. This five-car accident on the eastbound side of the Troy Menans Bridge, Route 378, kept drivers standing still and police officers on the go. Investigators on the scene say slick roads are to blame and offer this advice. It appears that it was due to uh, slippery conditions on the bridge this morning. You need to slow down, be real careful, keep your distance between cars. It's probably the most important thing. Police say no one was seriously hurt, but there was quite a bit of damage to all the cars involved. Same story on westbound I-90 in Rensselaer. Traffic was stopped after this three-car accident just before the Patroon Island Bridge. Police say no one here was seriously hurt. And this was the scene in North Greenbush on Blooming Grove Drive just off Sitzmark Lane. Police say three cars stopped, waiting for a fourth car to turn. They say a small bus tried to stop as it approached, but slid on the ice, causing a chain reaction crash. Thankfully, no one was hurt and no children were on the bus. And further down the road on Blooming Grove Drive, this car waited for help after sliding off the road. Tanisha Millette, News 10. Then we came out and came out of the apartment and saw the opposite house. The smoke was coming out of the uh, door. But it was more than smoke inside apartment N22 at the Village 1 Apartments in Menans. Flames apparently caused by a cigarette engulfed the living room and emitted an incredible amount of heat around the apartment. We knocked the door and first there was no response. And third time, fourth time there was a sound like, oh, like man sound. And immediately I called my daughter and asked her to. Uh, dial 911. Two men inside the apartment had to be rescued from the flames. Sridhar Adupunganti and Ravi Shankar Jivanatnam, both seriously burned, both airlifted to the burn unit at Westchester Medical Center. 
Twelve apartments were left unlivable. Fifteen people total were forced from their homes. A resident of another building who didn't want to go on camera expressed some concerns that sometimes the smoke alarms in these buildings don't work. The fire chief says the ones in here did, and if it wasn't for them, this could have been worse. In the apartment, it was hardwired in. It, when that alarm went off in the building, the fire alarm, the smoke alarms is what saved everybody. A fire at this same complex in July 1998 left nearly three dozen people homeless. Chief Dan Handerhan says the construction of this building is slightly different and minimized the damage. The sheetrock did its job and kept all the heat in and kept all the flames, everything, the firewalls, everything. I got to give them credit on that. Um, there was, everything was confined to that one apartment. It could have been a lot worse. Reporting to you from Manans, Walt McClure, News 10. Thick black smoke eclipses the sun as flames rage for the second time at an old rail yard in Schuyler Heights. At this fire, crews find themselves in the same spot as a week ago Monday night when flames tore through yet another abandoned repair shop at the D&H rail yard. Investigators suspect that one was set. The rail yard, abandoned for more than a decade, investigators believe this may be a prime breeding ground for trouble. There's a lot of kids that play back here, so right now it's under investigation. It's a big area, so hard to say. You know, we've had a rash of fires, a rash of brush fires, had a fire here last week that was suspicious. I think it was that. Maybe kids. Nearby, neighbors gather to watch the flames rip through yet another shop. I saw the smoke and I said, oh my God, you know, not another one. Linda Baker says she's worried. What's next? Two fires in the same location at the same time is too much of a coincidence. And it's, we're concerned because our houses are close by. While investigators tell us there are no hazardous materials inside the building and merely debris like tires, neighbors are concerned. They had the big fire in Troy the other night. 
they had the one up in outside Freesville and everything. It's getting kind of nerve-wracking because especially with the rubber or anything like that, you don't know what's in the air. That's my biggest concern. And for investigators on the scene now, their concern is just who or what is behind this. Because of the heat, firefighters tried to take it easy battling these flames and not to overexert themselves. There were no injuries during this fire. However, last week it was a different story when four firefighters from Schuyler Heights were injured battling those flames. Reporting to you from Schuyler Heights, Sharman Sacchetti, News 10. But he says making the move to Albany's Nano Tech Center could save your fire department money on an important piece of life-saving equipment. Critical imaging, which makes infrared cameras that can see through smoke, is creating a couple of positions in Albany to make the sensors for those cameras. That should happen by summer. The company says using the technology here will allow them to make more sensors, in turn cutting production costs and the retail price. Right now, even the least expensive cameras cost around $10,000. With this new technology, the price could be cut in half. Walt McClure takes a look at what this means for big and small fire departments alike. This is one of the three thermal imaging cameras that the Shaker Road Loudonville Fire Department and Colony has. Among the biggest departments in town with a lot of homes, they have had an easier time coming up with the cash to buy them, and Chief Jerry Perra says they have become a necessity. By us having the camera, it allows us to possibly go in and make a rescue quicker. It also allows us when we're on certain calls, such as uh, smoke in a building, um, smell of smoke in a building to actually allows us to find hot spots. Here's a quick example of why they're so important. You're not looking at a blank screen. This is a room filled with smoke. Not exactly like firefighters face, but close enough to show what the camera does. You can't see the other side of the room. If there was a potential victim down on the other side of the room, what the camera allows us to do is to look through 
and filter the smoke through the ability of the camera. On the other hand, the Manan Fire Department is one of the smaller departments in the town of Colony, which makes dropping 15 grand on a thermal imaging camera a much bigger deal. So they're excited about the possibility of the prices coming down. We try to update all our equipment all the time, and we could actually use two or three cameras, but, you know, if we're going to spend $15,000 on a camera or two by $15,000 for just for new turnout gear. Both Chief Handerhan and Chief Paris say changing technology and lower prices will make it easier for them to increase the number of cameras they have and in turn gain the ability to save more lives. In Colony, Walt McClure, News 10. Changes could be on the way for the Rensselaer waterfront coming up. We'll break down the...